The blessings and curses are real. God said, "If you do this, you will be blessed. If you do that, you will be cursed." The whole Israelites, with the whole people, they are going through this. So before they enter into the land of Canaan, God told them once again. At first, they received blessing. But it was getting worse and worse. At the end, the whole nation was destroyed, and then they they were destroyed for two thousand years, and then they revived. So it was really a terrible time. Basically, they live out Gen, Gen,、uh, Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight with their whole life for generations. Uh, if we want to put it simple, it's quite simple. But you listen, you don't take it in. So it's simple, but it's also really hard. The logic is simple. You listen, but you don't hear. So the title I will give today is "Hold on to the God who gives us blessing," or we say that hold fast to the God who gives us blessing, who blesses us. To us, that should be the case. When our our brain is working right. We want blessings, but not curses. No one wants to choose curses, but what's our problem? Because we want to hold fast to blessing, we don't want to hold on to God. We don't want to. We want to separate God from blessings. That's our problems. Just like the prodigal son in the New Testament, I want the fa- my father's money, but not my not but not my father. I want all the inheritance and possessions, but I don't want my father himself. When I got all the money, then I just leave. That's the key point. Yes, every one of us wants blessing. But most of the time, we separate blessing from God. We want to ask God to help us. We must hold fast to the God who blesses us. Let's go to our scripture today, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, the first paragraph, verse one to fourteen. God first. Comma will be above all nations, above all nations. Verse one: If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully be, follow all His commands, I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. Here it says nations, all the nations. If we put God first, we will be high above all the nations. We lift up God; God will lift us up. We put God first, and God will put us first. Then God will set us apart from the rest of the world. The whole thing depends on our attitude towards God. Here, if you fully obey, fully obey. So fully and obey 
are the exact same words. That means you, if you listen and listen, the Lord your God, you listen and listen, and carefully or follow all His commands I give you today. So here, uh, carefully follow. That means is to tend the Garden of Eden. That means I fix my eyes on the Word of God. I look, look at it, watch over it. That means when we put God first, we put the Word of God first. First of all, when before I do anything, I want to see what the Word of God says. I keep looking at the Word of God, and then I do according to the Word of God. And that means we are carefully follow all His commands. I put, I highly regard God's words as the most important. I regard the word of God as the most important in my life. Then God will consider me as the most important above all the nations. How do we say that is above all nations? The key is on the first verse. Then you will go on. Verse two: All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Verse two: Verse two uh, give us an important concept. We have two blind spots, human. First one, we want blessings, but I want to, you know, cut off all ties with God. That's the first problem. The first one, we thought that we can chase after blessings, but blessing will run away from us. Blessing seems like it it has life. It's 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 alive. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. So accompany, right? Come on you. It's the blessings chase after you. You don't chase after blessings. There is a story that we used to tell, like little kids. A dog chases after its tail, and it just go round and round, right? And the other dog said to the dead dog, "What are you doing? I want to, you know, grab my tail." He said, "No need. You just go, go ahead, and the tail will follow you. The tail will follow you anyway. So you don't. We don't try to grab blessings. Blessing will run after you. Blessing will run after you until you have nowhere to go. And curses will be the same." So these are the two major blind spots of man. We want to separate God from blessings. We really think that we can chase after blessings. But there are two things that is behind us, running after us. There's blessings and curses. So the speed they will catch up on us depends on how much we regard God. If we put God first, God will make us set us high above all the nations. How do you say? Oh no, it's too abstract. I can't understand. Then. So basically, God is saying that all the blessing will come on you, so that you will be high above all the nations. 
blessings mean bowing down, kneeling down. That means kneeling down. All things will bow down, kneel down before you. We want our we want us to prosper in marketplace. The marketplace will bow down before you, bow to you. A lot of time we are troubled by relationship, but if we are blessed, that means the relationship will bow down to you. As all things bow down to you, then that's the way God set you high above all the nations on earth. So later on, as it goes on, God is telling us what we can understand about blessings. Verse three: You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. That means you are blessed everywhere. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, da 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 da, all will be blessed. Verse four and five: Everything belongs to you will be blessed. Your basket, your kneading trough will be blessed. Your daily needs will be met. And will prosper. You will be blessed when you come in, and you blessed be when you go out. Verse six. That means when you go out, you go out wherever you go. Why do you want to go that way? Because you have, we have some business to attend to. So you go there, and then you will go meet this person and make this decision. That means you'll be blessed in everything. A、uh, come in here is not what we、uh, what we think. We say go in and go out and come in, go out and come in. Come in actually means relationship, contact of relationship. That means you'll be blessed in relationship. Verse six. That's what verse three and six tell us. Verse seven to fourteen. Be victorious in riches, and here verse seven talks about enemies, and then verse eight talk about everything you put your hand to, talk about prosperity. Everything, all the problems you want to solve will be smooth. Verse ten, then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they will fear you. That when you declare the name of the Lord, they knew that you belong to God, then they they will they will fear you. Verse seven talks about we will be victorious. The enemy tried to attack you because they thought that they could defeat you. They thought they could defeat you. They want what you have. So they attack you, but they are defeated. Here they see you, and they will fear you. They don't even dare to attack you. So that's the victory in spirit. And then there will be rain from heaven, and bless all your crops. Prosperity and riches. That's what verse one to fourteen tells us. The first paragraph. In everything that you can think of, wherever you are, whatever decision you are making, whatever is related to you, you want to do. Everything will bow down to you. People meet you; they bow down to you. That means you are higher than them. They will put you up, and they respect you. How would that happen? Because I lift up God, I lift up, I lift God up. So in all area, I will prosper. <coughs> That's what verse one to fourteen tells us. 
when we put God first, He will put us first before all the peoples on earth. But if we do not put God first, then we are worse than the, all the nations on earth. Uh, 15 to 28. If you put God last, you will be thrown, you will be scattered in the world. Here you will be like. So here I'm in the promised land. Why will I be taken to the nations? Because I'm in captivity. So I will be taken away to a nation. But the nations take you captive. They think, no, you are not good enough. And then they just throw you to another one. Then you will be thrown away among the nations. People don't want you. They think that you are so troublesome. That means you are worse than all the nations on earth. It's not that the, the nations try to invade you. It's they invade you, they are victorious, but they don't want you. What do I want to do with Israel? If you want it, I will give you. Just like Siberia in Russia, who wants to go there? <coughs> Everyone was like, oh, I don't want this, I don't want this, and then they'd be thrown away. So you were set above nations, but if you don't obey God, you're worse than the nation of the world. 16 to 19, corresponding to verse 3 to 6. Blessing is about bowing down. How about curses? It's quite interesting to know the meaning of curse. You will reduce in number. You will be lessened. You will not be despised. That means you reduce in number. You will become smaller and smaller, diminished. If we are cursed in finance, our finance will be less and less. We make a lot of financial decisions, they're all wrong. This is curse. You should have few hundred cattle and herds, then 20% less next year, and then 20% less next year. Maybe after four or five years, you know, you only have few left. Then you're cursed. You are reduced in number. You're diminished. The curse will run after the, the person. What does that mean? The curse will run after a nation. A person, a nation does not follow God. What should God do? He will make you reduce in number that your power will be reduced, that you will be divided, and divided, and divided, and then you have no strength left. It's opposite to blessings. Blessing is wherever you go, you know, everything will bow down to you. Whatever you want to do, God will bow down, uh, the things will bow down to you. Everything will obey you. But curse is the opposite. It's not the same. You cannot get rid of curse because it runs after you. And blessing also runs after you. Curse also runs after you. 
podcast is to make you less. It's a judgment of God on those who are opposing Him. Maybe it's a person, a pers, a people, or a nation. You are opposing me. I will make you less and less. See if you will reflect on yourself. Oh, you don't reflect on yourself. You will be lesser. You just be less and less and less, and then you will be weaker and weaker, low and lower. And then verse twenty to twenty-four, the curse of death. And they always says that you will be destroyed and come to sudden ruin. Verse twenty, and then verse twenty-one at the end is like, till you perish. Twenty-four, you destroyed. You don't just diminished. God wants to destroy you altogether. So God is telling us the overall outcomes, and then step by step, how does that come about? Verse twenty-five about your enemy. That means you will lose protection. Your enemy will be able to defeat you easily. The protection is not just from the enemies. You will come at them from one direction. Verse twenty-six: Your carcass will be food for all the birds and the wild animals, and there will be no one to frighten them away. Even the birds of the sky will eat you. If you are without protection, that will be your outcome. You will have sickness, and then you will lose healing. And then there you will be. I will, the Lord will afflict you with madness, blindness, and confusion of mind. Verse twenty-eight. And then verse thirty, you will be pledged to marry to a woman, but another will take her and rape her. And you will build a house, but you will not live in it. And then all your herds, your children, will be taken away. You lose salvation. So it's telling us. What curse will be look will look like? Thirty eight to forty four talk about the attack on the fi a curse on finance. Verse forty five, all these curses will come on you. They will pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the Lord your God and observe the commands and decrees He gave you. Verse forty five. They will be a sign and a wonder to you and your descendants forever. Verse forty-six, forty-five to fifty-seven. The curse of being attacked by your enemy is quite in details. How the enemy will come. How they attack your city. How they take away everything you have. And then you have no food. You have to eat your own children. That's the necessary step that you are being thrown, you know, thrown away in the nations. First of all, you must be invaded by nations. Nations will attack you, invade you. Then you will come to this uh, point. This today we want to share one point as well here. Here, the Lord will scatter you among all nations. Scattered, scattered. You will say that you know I do not obey the Lord our God and carefully follow all His commands. That's my ending.
So it feels like God is, you know, looking and watching over Israel, see if you have made any mistake, and then I will punish you. No, that's not the case. If we don't follow God, the reality is, then God said, you will be just like nations, right? You will be just like the rest of the nations. But the nation is like you know the weak will be the weak will be destroyed and the strong will be the king. But it's just because you listen to me, I save you, I set you above all the nation on earth. But if you do not follow me, I don't need to prune you. You simply lose my protection. You lose my presence. You'll be just like nations. You're just invading each other, attacking, and then being defeated. But you are a little bit different from the nations. You know, scattered among nations. It sounds so terrible, but it tastes terrible. But at least you are alive. But just people don't want you, right? You will be thrown from. You will be cast away from this nation to another one. You will rule from. You are ruled by a nation A, but then later on you are ruled by nation B, etc., etc. That's the case. That's the world. But because you were saved by God, so you are alive. But people don't want you. That is the case. And many nations, when they are being attacked, they are destroyed totally. But for the Israel, even though they forsook God, they still have a bit of God's protection left. They need to suffer a lot. But that's why the nation was destroyed for two thousand years. But the nation was with established. But for other nation, it it doesn't happen because their nation destroyed. They are destroyed forever. So they are still different from the rest of the world. Yes, you are scattered among nations, but still you survive. There is this invisible force protecting you, so that for generation you observe Sabbath. And then, when you suffer for many years, God say, "Okay, I will revive your nation." But it will go downward, actually. Fifty-eight to sixty-eight, that they will lose God once again, and then karma worse than the former state, because at the end you went back to Egypt. You want to be sold as slave, but no one wants to take you. God delivered the Israelites from the land of slavery, but the Israelites chose to forsake God. Then God delivered them to Egypt again, but this time not as slave. That you want to be slave, no one wants to take you. So here, it talks about twenty-eight. Talks about curses and blessings. Israelites listen, but they did not hear. For about for us, not only should we listen, we see how Israelites has demonstrated this fact, this truth, for a few thousand years. We must learn the lesson. He is really good to us. We are being chosen among nations. We have seen how God disciplined Israelites for a few thousand years. Chapter twenty-eight. For the few thousand years, Israelites experienced that. There is a conclusion here. 
do not separate blessing from God. Yes, no one wants curses. We want blessings. But most, a lot of time, we easily we prone to separate blessings from God. We thought we just hold on to blessings. We don't understand that God blessings should come after us. God blessings should overtake us, come after us, so that we are high above all the nations. But you must know that in the same time, curses are going after us if we don't follow God. Everything we do will not prosper. I believe most of us are first generation、uh, Christians. Remember, when you were not a Christian, the curses on your life. You were living in sin. You need to take on the curses from the family line. Everything was not smooth. When you are in pain, we chose to follow God, and faithfully, God responds to us step by step, and we have strong feeling about it. Then come today, we ask God to help us. We delight to serve God. Delight to exalt God, and God delights to、uh, make everything bow down to us. Let's worship our God. That's the end of our message today.